Today we're heading to a place that personifies freedom and the American dream. Now I'm not talking about Hooters, I'm talking about Texas. When you think Texas, you think of tough cowboys and people that stand up for what they believe in in this country. I mean, it's as American as if Sarah Palin were wearing a bikini made out of apple pie and eagle's feathers. So never forget that we got it mighty good in Texas. Back in 2012, I was invited down to this little town in Texas by my buddy Ryan Langerhands of the Buck Commander TV show, and my boy Tombo Martin was there. Ryan introduced me to the Anderson family, and Daniel and Matthew and their dad and, and Kim and her parents, and everybody that's down there has become as close, if not closer, than family. And we have just had a ball for the last three years hunting down there in East Texas. Just for me, over the last three years down in Texas, the kill shot tally, on camera at least, goes a little something like this. Five does. Five hogs. Dropped him, baby. One buck. That's my first Texas buck right there. He got good brows. One coyote. Two javelinas. And two diamondback rattlesnakes. That's 16 critters. That's a pretty good three year stretch. <laughs> you can basically hunt round the clock all the time and never run out of stuff to shoot and hunt. Why don't I live in Texas? Well, we are putting some fuel in the 2500. We're about to head out to Daniel's house. We got here in about 20 hours, door to door, from my house in Virginia down here to Franklin, Texas. We're sitting at Mud Creek Country Store. This is Daniel's store, Daniel and David's store. He even talked to my, my good buddy, old Uncle Ted Nugent's here, man, and do a little bit of rocking out. He's got a benefit concert he's gonna play, so. We only got a couple days, but we're gonna hit it hard. First morning in Texas. Pretty excited. We're in a little spot they call Swamp Hill. And they call it that because these bottoms a lot of times will flood and that's one of the highest places around and there's a thicket up there, which is a good thing because we feel like that's where all the deer are at. We've not seen any deer driving in, which is a, probably a pretty good thing too because that means they're, they're not moving right now. Hopefully they'll move uh, now that we're all set and ready to go, they'll move later this morning. We're gonna sit tight. It's the first morning in Texas. We've got really three solid days to hunt and maybe a piece of another day if we need it. But we'll see what we can get done. It's Texas, day one. It just starts cracking daylight. We're getting settled in, and a really big buck comes stomping out of the swamp. This deer comes in, the wind is quartering to him slightly. He's dancing on that line where he's gonna catch our wind and he's starting to get a little bit nervous. At the point when it looks like he's gonna turn and run, I hang the Hoyt up and I pull out the 300 blackout. Problem is, from the angle I'm trying to shoot him, the camera can see him, but I don't have a clear shot. And then eventually the wind just starts blowing directly at him and uh, the whole thing is done, man. I mean, he smelled us and took off. Why can't we ever have anything go right? 
I don't understand it. I did a daggone curse against us or something. If I'd have picked up the gun first instead of the bow, I could have killed him right there, but I was thinking he was going to come in. You know, last time I was in Texas, they were just about to do the grand opening of the new Mud Creek convenience store, restaurant, and it is the most awesome place. I mean, David, Brian, and Daniel have worked really hard on this place. It is second to none as far as a convenience store stop, gas station, and the restaurant is phenomenal. The food is just amazing. They even had a few pictures of some celebrities on the wall. So we went to Mud Creek that night, uh, had a little dinner, and of course, somebody remembered that it was my birthday, and here comes the birthday cake. I really appreciate my lovely wife thinking about me on the road all lonely and on my birthday, and she had a cake sent down there to Texas for me, which I thought was pretty sweet. She's a special girl. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't cry. I work out sometimes. The next day, we decided to get a little bit of a change of scenery. We head out to Mahia, Texas to see our good buddy, David. Well, it's the second morning here in Texas. Josh and I are set up. As you can probably see in a little ground blind or box blind, we're over here at my buddy David's. I know I keep talking about it, and it'll probably be like in every show, but we have had the most epic run of like unfortunate or bad luck everywhere we've gone in the whole country this year. I mean, everybody says, oh, you should have been there last week or as soon as we leave. They call us and say, man, the deer all over the place this week. I guess it's uh, some years are like that. You know, it wasn't long before we saw some more movement on the tree line and what looked like a giant German shepherd steps out into the field. So I'm drawing a bead down on this coyote with my 300 blackout and all of a sudden another coyote pops out in the field. So now I'm getting greedy. <laughs> I'm thinking I can call these things in. So I start squeaking on the back of my hand, trying to draw these coyotes in so I have a better opportunity to maybe pop one and then unload the magazine on the other one. I can only swing my rifle so far. Josh is filming him out of another window and I can't get on this coyote. <laughs> Man, I'm thinking, how do we screw this up? The first morning, a big buck gets away from us, and then here we have two coyotes well within rifle range, and we let them get away. It's embarrassing is what it is. One of them came running right at us, so instead of shooting the one that was standing still out there, I started to see if we could get this one in. And by that time, we messed around and they both ran off. Lo and behold, the good Lord gives us another shot at killing one of these fawn eaters and another coyote runs out in the field at about 300 yards. Don't send me three coyotes. I might mess up on the first two, but that last one's gonna die. This coyote runs in so fast that I've got my scope jacked on the max setting for that coyote that was out there, you know, 300 plus. All I can see is fur. I can't even tell where I am on him. So I gotta jack my scope back down. He runs out there, gets kind of spooked, and starts to run off. Okay. Chalk one up for the Roadrunner. The coyote is dead. We had two coyotes come in. And we got greedy, and I tried to squeak the second one in so I could go bang on the first one and then kill the second one. And a third coyote came right now. We ain't gonna give him any kind of quarter. I had my scope on full power because he was out there at 200 yards. And that sucker ran right to the blind. He's probably 70 yards right there or less. 60 yards. <laughs> it's about time we kill something. Come down to Texas, you're supposed to kill stuff. You're not supposed to sit around and be some kind of glorified bird watcher. That's pretty old. Coat, man. Real pretty coat. So we might not have been successful 
on killing a deer, but we definitely were successful on saving a deer's life. Another fawn next spring will live because I pulled the trigger on this coyote. Day three, it's time to get serious. That night we hunted by the creek and the creek was flooded out into the timber. Well, it's supposed to be the last evening here in Texas. It is the last evening. It might not be the last hunt. We might hunt in the morning. Set up in a place they call the Dry Creek, but right now it's the very, very flooded creek. We're looking at Pecan Grove right behind me. So last night in Texas, here we go. We had a couple visitors earlier. A raccoon was swimming the creek to us. And then all of a sudden in the distance, we see a decent buck coming to us. I've got this deer dead to rights the whole time, but it's so thick that we just couldn't get enough footage on him to shoot him. So as the sun's setting, we look over to the left and there's a bunch of deer, including some pretty good bucks. And that's right by a spot where I've got a bow stand. So we put a plan together for the next morning and we're gonna be right back in there trying to shoot one of these big bucks. So it's cracking daylight. I'm packing my rifle just in case we see a deer way out in the open. And sure enough, there's a whole bunch of bucks out in the field chasing this one hot doe. So when we spotted these bucks, they're on the other side of this very deep creek. I mean, you can cross it, but you're gonna be in water like neck high. So Josh and I get in a position where we're shifting around and, and I get a shot on the deer and then all of a sudden he moves behind some brush and that just keeps happening over and over again. and he finally works into a spot where I've got a loophole to shoot through. So his head is behind some stuff now. Hold on one second. How bad is it? All right, I got him now. Okay, you ready? Yeah. So I pulled the trigger on this buck and all the other deer scattered for a second and then they calmed back down and looked back toward the spot where he was standing. So we were pretty confident that he dropped in his tracks right there. He's right there, that's about where he was standing. It worked out, man, that's a good buck. That's a good mature buck. Now you know the Texas deer, their bodies are a lot smaller than even back home in Virginia, but uh, that's a mature buck, that's a good deer. We would call him a 10 pointer in Virginia. One of the coolest things about this was Daniel and his boy Walker and Brian and his boys Wade and Luke we're out armadillo hunting. So we gave him a call and said we had a big buck down and not to tell the kids. I'm gonna hide this deer behind this tree. And I'm gonna tell him I shot an armadillo. And could he help me find it? The last place I saw it was behind this tree. We're gonna put a camera on it, surprise him. I don't know, I don't think I put a very good shot on him. Might've hit him a little far back. Oh, look, here's his trail right here. Look, look right here. See his drag trail where he was, and he fell right there. Look, you can see where he was tearing it up right here. Oh, God, that scared me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I scared you half to death. It didn't scare you, did it, boy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What'd you think, baby? <laughs> that's a big, that's a big daddy right there. Big daddy right yes, sir. That's that awesome. Another successful trip to Texas. You know, Brian and Kevin, Matthew, everybody that's down there, we had a ball with you guys. David, thank you guys so much. Texas is one of our all-time favorite places to hunt, and we'll be back really soon.